Hello YouTube and welcome to 2022. Happy New Year. And what better way to kick off the new year than to talk about the 2022 tax law updates that we know about so far. In the description section below the video, you can find a Dropbox link so you can download the spreadsheet we're gonna be discussing completely free. In this update, we're gonna be covering some of the newer stuff from 2021 as well as 2022. Based on your feedback from last year's video, I'm gonna highlight the newest items first, and then we'll walk through the tax updated numbers for 2022. Because I'm doing a few things different this year with this tax update video, I'm listing timestamps for you here on screen. Feel free to jump around as much as you would like to, not gonna hurt my feelings one bit. I just want you to get the most out of this video as possible. Based on previous year's feedback, I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of some key items for your 2021 return, which you will be filing by April 15th of 2022. We're gonna go over that for the first seven or eight minutes, starting with a child tax credit. So I don't think you're gonna to wanna to miss that piece of it. But if you just wanna dive right into 2022 numbers, just fast forward or click the timestamp in the description section of the video to get to that time spot. I hope you find this video enjoyable. And so there's no confusion. The tax laws and rules we're discussing today deal with federal income tax of the United States and nothing else. Okay, let's kick it off by talking about that child tax credit because there's a lot of weird and new nuances around this credit. In 2021, that credit got a significant increase. You guys saw it, it went from $2,000 before to $3,000 if your child was under the age of 17 and up to $3,600 if you had a child that was five or younger. And besides the larger payments, the child tax credit was fully refundable in 2021. I don't think they've ever done that before. So that's completely different. In July of 2021, they were to issue you, if you did not elect out of it, checks from July through December of 2021 for those advanced child tax credit payments. So what you're gonna have to do when you're gonna file your taxes this year is you're gonna have to reconcile what you received in cash already versus what you can report as a credit on your 2021 return. That's a big difference and a big distinction I wanna point out here. The IRS is issuing letters out right now for it's gonna be called letter 6419 if I'm not mistaken. And it should lay out the payment history of what you've received from advanced child tax payments thus far. And you're gonna use that letter to help you reconcile the amount you've already received versus what you're allowed to report as a credit on your tax return for your 2021 tax filing. Now, if for whatever reason you don't get that letter, don't fret. It's not the end of the world. You can go to the irs.gov website and there's that online portal that you've probably logged into before to start receiving your advanced child tax credit payments or to elect out of them either way, where you can get that same history and same information. So either place, you can wait for the letter to come to you, which it should, but if it doesn't, log into your portal and I'm sure you can access that same data there. As far as 2022 is concerned, couple of things. First, I would not expect to receive any more advanced child tax credits in the form of cash. I wouldn't expect it for 2022. Secondly, you're gonna see the credit fall from roughly $3,000 per child back down to $2,000 per child as it was in tax year 2020. And the third thing is the credit is no longer gonna be fully refundable. It's gonna be refundable up to $1,500. Feel free to share this spreadsheet and this video with as many people as you would like to. I spend hours every single year updating this Excel spreadsheet for you guys. And the more people that we can distribute it to, the more knowledgeable about taxes they're gonna be. So if you guys can do that for me, I would so appreciate it. Next item of business is economic impact payments. Who remembers this? Well, you probably remember it as the stimulus checks or the stimulus payments, because it's the same thing. That's what the economic impact payment is. If you recall, in early January of 2021, you may have received an economic impact payment or a stimulus payment. If you did, the IRS is supposed to send you a letter, it's letter 6475, by the end of January of 2022. So of this year, they're supposed to send you that letter to help you reconcile how much of that economic impact payment you received 
And so you can reconcile that with the recovery rebate credit on your 2021 tax filing. Let's do a quick refresher course here on the economic impact payment and recovery rebate credits. They're very intertwined. The recovery rebate credit, what is it? It allows you to get a larger credit on your tax return if you did not get the proper amount of stimulus that you should have gotten. If you've gotten the proper amount of stimulus or the proper economic impact payment, then your recovery rebate credit will be zero. But for example, if your economic impact payment should have been $500 more, but it wasn't, then you're allowed to take a $500 credit on the recovery rebate credit line. The IRS is gonna send out that 6475 letter and it's gonna help you reconcile what that amount should be. Make sure you get it right the first time to avoid notices or adjustments later on from the IRS. But what about 2022? Well, as far as I'm aware of at this moment in time, there is no further plans for the IRS to issue economic impact payments this year. Now, after this year, I think we're gonna see the recovery rebate credit line go away on the 2022 tax filing unless they start issuing stimulus payments later on. Now let's talk about unemployment compensation, ladies and gentlemen. And let's jump in our time machine real quick. Let's jump in our time machine and let's go back to tax year 2020. What happened in 2020? If you recall that the unemployment compensation, there was an exclusion the IRS offered up of up to $10,200 of a person's unemployment compensation could be excluded from tax. It was awesome. It was so cool. However, for 2021, I got some bad news for you guys. Unfortunately, that they're not going to allow that same exclusion in 2021 if you received unemployment income. What you can expect, depending on the type of unemployment you received, is that it's gonna be fully taxable as it has traditionally been. The same can be said for unemployment comp for 2022. Now clearly you all can see that I enjoy teaching everybody about taxes and how all this stuff works. But the one thing I enjoy more is when you guys drop a like. So if you can do that for me on this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Let's kick off 2022 by talking about the revised income tax brackets for this year. I'm not gonna read the numbers to you on screen because that would be so extremely boring. But rather, I just wanna point out, I want you to find your filing status, whether you're single, head of household, or married filing joint. And if you're new to taxes, I want you to realize that you don't pay taxes all at one rate. That is a great misconception. Taxes in the tax rate you pay is like a ladder. You actually pay different rates on different levels of your income. So uh, when you first climb the ladder, let's say you're a single filer, be looking at the single file column, your first $10,000 is basically taxed at 10%. Your next $10,000 up to 41,775 is taxed at 12%. And the next rung higher on the ladder is tax, that section of income is taxed at 22%. So I just wanna point out that you're paying taxes at a blended rate. Multiple rates are factored in and that's how this works and to figure out what your taxable income is where is that number on your form and what these rates are calculated on it's this section of your tax return is what that is based on that is your taxable income and the rates that are being calculated is off that line let's talk about long-term capital gain rates now this deals with your long-term stock sales or you know long-term sales of assets deals with qualified dividends and things of that nature there's been a lot of talks surrounding capital gains and investments, and a lot of it probably stems back to you hearing taxing on realized gains. That has not happened yet. That is, there's a lot of talk around it, but nothing has gone into effect at this point. Therefore, there really isn't a lot new here in terms of what has changed. The only thing that has changed is they've buffered up a little bit. They've boosted up the income thresholds. If you're looking at the single filer column, Basically, you can have an income of up to $41,675. If you have long-term stock sales or qualified dividends, that income that's coming in is taxed at 0%. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful, 0% tax. If your income goes above it, well then part of your 
capital gains and qualified dividends start to be taxed at 15% once you've gone over 41,675. But that's essentially how it works with investments and things of that nature. If you can make your living through long-term capital gains or qualified dividends, it is absolutely unbelievable how much less tax you'll pay when comparing that against making money through wages. You will pay so much less tax, it's crazy. So if you can do that and you can structure your income so you're making money through your investments, you're gonna be killing it tax-wise and you're gonna have more money in your pocket. Food for thought. Standard deduction. Once again, it's going up a little bit over last year, which is great. Remember the standard deduction, what does it do for you? It helps reduce the amount of your taxable income. So if you make $100,000 and your standard deduction is $12,950, you get to subtract the 12,950 from the 100,000 and you pay tax on what remains. So standard deduction is just a freebie tax deduction. It's great. And since most people no longer itemize, about 90% of the population uses the standard deduction now. Thanks to all of your feedback, I've also added the additional deductions this year for the elderly and blind on this spreadsheet. Medical deductions, really not much has changed here. The only two things you need to know is that you can only benefit from a medical deduction if, number one, you can itemize, which most people can't, unfortunately. Number two, the only you're only allowed to deduct medical expenses that are above and beyond whatever 7.5% of your adjusted gross income happens to be for that tax year. So remember that, it has to be above 7.5% of your income and you can only get an actual tax benefit from it if you're able to itemize your taxes. Child tax credit we've already talked about, so let's just talk about the saver's credit. Now I did a whole separate video on this topic I'll show it right here. You can go check out this video if you'd like. I'll leave it in the description and it explains in detail what the saver's credit is. And all I'll say is that if you can qualify for it, it's an absolutely wonderful credit. And now what does a credit even do? We were talking about credits earlier. A credit for taxes is better than a deduction. I want you to remember this. A cre tax credit is superior to a tax deduction. Why? A tax credit actually reduces your tax dollar for dollar, while a tax deduction does not. So the credit can be up to 50%, 20%, or 10% of retirement plan related contributions depending upon your income range. State and local taxes are still limited to $10,000. I think we're gonna still see it capped for 2022, but maybe into 2023 something will change here, but that is what it is. And you can only get a benefit from it if you're able to itemize. If you can't itemize, well then it doesn't matter anyways. Mortgage and interest deductions, I'm not gonna read this to you, but the rules have been the same now since 2017, so hopefully you're aware of what they are. If not, you can read this section of the spreadsheet and pause the video. Once again, you can only get a benefit from your mortgage interest if for your personal home, for your personal residence, if you're able to itemize. If you can't itemize, doesn't matter. Skipping on down to the education section, because I know that affects a lot of the viewers here. Your education, you got three main deductions. Typically, you got your student loan interest, whatever amount you pay there, up to $2,500, and that's if your income is under 70,000 if you're single, or 140,000 if you're married and filing joint. Then you have the American Opportunity Credit, which is based on just education expenses you pay. That credit is up to $2,500 and it's refundable up to about $1,000. And that is of the two education credits. The other one is the lifetime learning credit, the American Opportunity Credit, which you can get with your first four years for obtaining your bachelor's degree, is the better credit. That's the best one, the American Opportunity Credit. Beyond that, the lifetime learning credit is still great, and you can get up to $2,000 there. What they've done this year, one difference, one distinction, is they've made the phase out the income phase out limitations for the American opportunity credit and the lifetime learning credit the same. In the past, they've always been different, but they finally made them the same for tax year 2022. If you like putting money away in your 401k, I got some good news for you. You can add an extra thousand dollars this year up to $20,500 per person for tax year 2022, 
up from 19,500 for 2021. And if you're doing catch-up contributions, if you're over the age of 50, then you can contribute up to $27,000 in tax year 2022. Thing to remember about a 401k, a traditional 401k is you get a tax deduction now and you pay the tax later when you take the money out in a future year. If you're young or just starting out or have you know, 10, 15, 20 years or more from retirement, then I think the Roth 401k, if that's an option for you, is the way to go. Speaking of Roths and IRAs, really no difference here for 2022. The contribution limitation is still stuck at $6,000 per person or up to $7,000 per person if you are over the age of 50. For those of you who are receiving Social Security, you're getting a large COLA adjustment compared to what I've seen in years past. 2021, it was 1.3%. 2022 is going to be 5.9%. I take it because the inflation is through the roof. And I think we're going to see more of it personally. That's just my personal opinion. So 5.9% adjustment for 2022. LMA rules have been the same now for quite some time since 2019. So I'll let you read that for yourself. Gift tax annual exclusion though is going up for 2022 up from 15,000 in 2021 to 16,000. Now, what does that even mean? Basically, it allows you to give another person a gift of up to $16,000. It could be cash, it could be property, whatever, and it would not require you to file a gift tax return, which is form 709. That's the tax form for gift taxes. If you were to give somebody more than $16,000 in 2022, then you would be required to file a gift tax return for that transaction. It's imperative to note that each person can give, let's say a husband and wife want to give money to their daughter. Well, both the dad and mom can each give to their daughter $16,000 a piece and still not have to file a gift tax return. Federal estate tax exemption is going up even more to $12 million if you're single or up to like 24 million if you're married filing joint. What does that even mean? Well, first of all, you gotta be rich to even worry about this stuff. But essentially what the federal estate tax exemption does is unless you have assets when you die above $12 million, let's say, you're gonna pay zero estate tax. And if you're married filing joint, you can die with under $24 million in assets and still pay no estate tax. That's essentially what that means. I know a lot of you guys don't care, but that's how it works. And if you ever do need to file one, it's form 706. And I filed a few of them in my day, but the amount of those returns I file is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Alternative minimum tax, I'm not really gonna cover here in this video. I, I did do a video a few years ago of how it works. You can check that video out if you'd like to. It's very complicated and most people aren't affected by it. So it's on the screen, it's on the spreadsheet though. So feel free to check it out if you'd like to. Affordable Care Act, the, you're no longer being penalized for health insurance from a federal level if you no longer have coverage. But I think that's gonna change in the future. But as of right now, you're not gonna be penalized federally if you don't have health insurance. Health savings accounts. If you don't have one and you can get one, please get one. I would really encourage you to do so. It's one of the best ways to save money from medical expenses. The thing that bankrupts most families in America is medical expenses. If you can get one, I would go for it because it's not only gonna help you save for your medical expenses, but it gives you a tax deduction as well, which means the government gets less of your hard-earned money. I have one, my wife has one, they're great. And I have a couple videos on the channel if you wanna learn how they work, the tax ability of them, and the application of it. I will link those videos in the description section of the video. And I think what I'll do is I'll just link my whole tax playlist at the bottom of the spreadsheet so you can sort through all of my tax videos. I think I have close to about a hundred tax videos thus far. Each year, the adoption credit usually goes up a little bit. If you're adopting, congratulations, that's really exciting. You can see the amounts on the spreadsheet. And if you get the earned income credit, which is a wonderful credit if you can get it. Now, most of my clients I've worked with in the past their income isn't low enough for them to get it, but if you qualify for it, then it's one of the best tax credits out there. It's arguably better than the child tax credit. But those are the uh, income plateau amounts, so feel free to check those out and notate that. Starting in 2021, if you have a net operating loss, it can only be carried forward. You can no longer carry it back. The last several years has allowed taxpayers to take losses and 
18, 19, and 20 and carry them back to like 2014 and 2015 to recuperate taxes they paid in a previous year when they had a lot of income. But in 2021, your net operating loss is limited to 80% of what that loss is and it can only carry forward. Standard mileage rate is up from 57.5 cents in 2021 to 58.5 cents per mile in 2022. And the mileage rate, what is that for? That's for businesses really. So if you're a business owner and you are not taking your actual vehicle deductions, but rather taking the mileage deduction, then that's the number you'd use to calculate what your deduction would be for your taxes. The section 199A deduction is still in play for tax year 2022. This might go away in the future, depending upon what the Biden administration does. But for now, it's up there. And essentially what it can do without going into too much detail because it's really complex is if you're a business owner and you could even do like real estate or if you have a farm or you know whatever it doesn't have to be some huge corporation but it could be you know if you, just a simple sole proprietorship depending upon what kind of business you're in you can get up to a 20 percent deduction on your business income that's pretty substantial because if you're a business owner and you make let's say 100 grand in business income and you get this deduction you can exclude $20,000 from your income from tax. I've listed the new phase out limitations for you. So that, that's what they are. And I have a couple of videos on the channel that explains how this all works. But for now, I'll leave it with that. Once again, I've listed the tax penalties for you so you know what they are. The RMD penalty is if you are supposedly supposed to take a retirement distribution if you're over the age of 70 or 72 and a half and you haven't done so, be looking into that because the amount of the distribution you can should take, if you don't take it, you could be penalized of up to 50% on that amount. So it's brutal. So please make sure you're taking whatever distribution amount you're required to. The failure to fire, file penalty is a big one because if you don't file a tax return and you're supposed to, whatever amount you owe, you could be penalized 4.5% of the balance per month. It's ugly. The failure to pay penalty is not as bad as a failure to file, but still it's what it's half a percent of whatever balance is still owed to the IRS that you were supposed to pay by April 15th. That's what that means. People always ask me, Mike, am I supposed to file a tax return? How do I know when to file? I've included for you this chart and this is directly now this is from 2021 because obviously 2022 forms aren't going to be out until 2023 but you can look here and essentially the rule of thumb is whatever the standard deduction amount is if you make less than that or up to the standard deduction amount you usually do not have to file so like for example if you're single if you make less than 12,550 and for 2021 you don't have to file there's because the standard deduction is going to wipe out whatever income you would have anyways. That's why that standard deduction is the amount to remember. But there's a few other instances here. I've listed this in the spreadsheet. If you have children, there's issue there's situations when kids must file and those are very special circumstances so you can read through this. This is directly from the 2040 or the 2021 1040 instructions that's where i pulled these charts from and i've just pasted them in the spreadsheet so you can have it all in one nice convenient place there's some other special situations where you must file one of those is even if your income is less than twelve thousand, if you are self-employed and you have net income from your business not gross but net income above four hundred dollars then you're actually required to file a tax return because the irs wants to see how you're making your money. I want to take a moment and thank you all for being such a wonderful audience. I hope you get a lot out of this video and the spreadsheets. I really enjoy making it each year. If the Build Back Better Act passes or whatever happens to pass in 2022, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to follow any new updates. I'll be making a lot of content around that if things change or when things change because taxes, they always change one way or the other. It's always evolving. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this and it was a great time hanging out with you. I will see you down in the comments. Until then, you can check out my other tax videos on my tax video playlist and I'll leave links to that playlist in the spreadsheet as well. Have a wonderful week and have a wonderful tax filing season. Love y'all. Peace.